the world's most honored watch is Longines. Longine watches have won 10 World's Fair grand prizes, 28 gold medals, and more honors for accuracy than any other timepiece. Longines, the world's most honored watch, is made and guaranteed by the Longines Whitnall Watch Company. It's time for the Longine Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A presentation of the Longine Whitnall Watch Company, maker of Longine, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnall, distinguished companion to the world honored Longine. Good evening. This is Frank Knight. May I introduce our co-editors for this edition of the Longine Chronoscope. Mr. Henry Steger, editor of Argosy Magazine, and Mr. William Bradford Huey, editor of the American Mercury. Our distinguished guest for this evening is the Honorable Hugh D. Scott, Jr., United States Representative from Pennsylvania. The opinions expressed are necessarily those of the speakers. Mr. Scott, our audience, of course, knows you as a man who's devoting a great deal of time to promoting the candidacy of General Eisenhower. Now, obviously, you think you're going to have an active candidate, so we won't ask you those old questions about whether or not you think he's going to run. But we would be interested in your interpretation of, general, of what you think will be General Eisenhower's positions. Now, sir, do you believe that General Eisenhower expects to wage a, an active campaign and express his opinions on all the vital issues. I would certainly expect that, yes. I, I have heard him say on occasion that when not in uniform, he would never have any hesitation in expressing himself vigorously on the issues of the day. And I've heard him use the expression, uh, the American people will be in no doubt as to where I stand on any important matter. You think that he's too good an American to expect to be given the nomination while the people are still in doubt as to where he stands. I think he would feel that the American people are entitled to know from not only his past speeches but from his future comments exactly where he stands on matters of grave import to them and I think uh, that long before the time the people will have to act they will be fully aware of his views stated without equivocation. Now, there are many good Americans who are bitterly opposed to the candidacy of General Eisenhower, sir. Now, for instance, let's take the, their, their uh, points that they make against him. Number one, they say that he has no stomach for controversy. What's your opinion on that, sir? Well, I think that's about as ridiculous as any statement I've ever heard because uh, to know General Eisenhower is to know that he has never hesitated to lay down the law, to express his opinions uh, as he sees them. I, I know of some of the things he's had to say to foreign governments. I know of one celebrated difference of opinion with Churchill, for example. Uh, now, there's nothing wrong with that man's what intestinal about, uh, fortitude. Uh, speaking of intestinal fortitude, how about uh, such ordinary everyday things as uh, we've even heard uh, talk about his weak stomach, uh, literally speaking? Well, I, I was there one day when uh, some gentleman had just spread that uh, unworthy sort of mm -hmm. smear and he said to me the only thing that has bothered me the whole time i've been in europe has been the fact that this morning i have a cold in the head and uh, that day he, in the afternoon he played 18 holes of golf it's his custom to work eight hours to play golf afterwards if time permits and often to work after that certainly he's a strong and virile and healthy man well now let's take the one about uh his having restrained General Patton, his having uh, uh, generally approved the cooperate with Russia policy in 1945-46, his having supported the Morgenthau Plan. Now, uh, do you believe that uh, General Eisenhower favored the cooperate with Russia plan in 1945-6? and Well, on the, on the contrary, I would be inclined very strongly to believe what you will find for yourself in the Forrestal Diaries. Page 76, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and page 264 and 265, where it shows that, uh, where Forrestal reports that Eisenhower very definitely came to grips with Churchill, that he complained against the fixing of that line, that he wanted to proceed as far as our military potential will permit. And then another thing occurs in another place in the Forrestal diaries, he expressed grave mistrust of giving any concession away to the Russians at the forthcoming Yalta conference and said to Churchill, I hope 
you will not make major concessions to the Russians because they can't be trusted. How about specifically the A-bomb, Mr. Scott? Uh, there was some talk, you know, about sharing that with Russia at the time, around 1945. What was his, what was his uh, thought there? Uh, I, I, I could not uh, answer my own knowledge because I'm not familiar with the controversy, but I do know that his general distrust of communism his hatred of communism and his distrust of Russia would never have allowed General Eisenhower to concede for a moment that the A-bomb ought to be shared uh, with mm -hmm. Russia. And I've heard of his views in the Korean War where he is reluctant to use it as a military weapon unless and until there is no other alternative. Now, let's, you mentioned Yalta a moment ago, sir. Now, number one, it's your opinion that General Eisenhower was consulted before the Yalta conference. It's my opinion that uh, he was consulted generally on military and diplomatic matters and that he did express himself as Forrestal reports that he did as being very mistrustful of the Russians and hopeful uh, that no In short, it would be your made. opinion that he would have been opposed to the concessions made by President Roosevelt to Russia at Yalta. Oh, I would very definitely feel that and I, ha and I know from very recent conversations how much he hates and fears communism and how anxious he is that the American people and especially the young people will become aware of the dreadful and the awful menace which communism is. It's, it's your belief that he understands the nature of the communist conspiracy throughout the world and that he as would no be As no other man does, Mr. Huey, as no other man does in my opinion and I think he is the foremost fighter for the American way of life for the democratic way for the for the way of the collective security of the free well, people uh, that returning I know. to the scene here in the United States it's often been said that uh, his uh, being favored by the Truman administration on so many occasions might be the kiss of death how do you feel about that well I've seen a letter which the general wrote to someone on a first name basis not so long ago in which he said I have never been responsible for nor assumed responsibility for the policies of any administration, any administration during the 40 years in which I've been in the army. Now, most Americans... I think that's the answer to that. Surely I know that he's free yeah. to, to combat uh, the things with which he disagrees, and that would include a lot of Trumanism, and he's a, he's a highly honorable man of great integrity, and he certainly wouldn't go along with this shabby corruption that we are suffering today. What about our Asiatic policy, and specifically Mr. Atchison? Do you think you'd have any enthusiasm for Mr. Atchison? <laughs> I, I don't know his personal opinion, but I don't see how uh, he could go along with the Asiatic policy, and I know many of the strongest criti critics of the Asiatic policy who have talked to the general and then expressed themselves as entirely satisfied with Ike Eisenhower's views on the Asiatic policy. Now, most people who, who are Certainly anti... Certainly wouldn't favor any truckling toward communism or any, any uh, appeasement. Now, most Americans who are anti-administration, sir, won a battle in 1952. They think that they lost to Truman in 1948 because they didn't have a scrapping candidate. Now, is it your conviction, sir, that if they nominate General Eisenhower, they will get a real scrapping candidate and not, a, not another Me Too candidate. Listen, I, I'd like to say to you, Mr. Huey, and to the people in this television audience, that if they knew General Eisenhower as I know him and as many other people who know him better than I do are aware of, there is no question of the fact that there is much that goes on in our government in domestic and foreign affairs which he will feel free to criticize, which he will criticize, and if the people want to fight, by golly, we'll give them to him because there's an awful lot that... I hate about this administration, and I think that the general's views are those of a good, modern-minded, middle-of-the-road Republican. How about the MacArthur fight? Uh, and uh, I would expect him to do the same thing. You know, there was a lot of talk about Eisenhower and MacArthur being at odds. Could you clear that up? I'd like to know how they feel about each other. Well, I, I, I don't, uh, I can't obviously say how one man feels about another. It's in his mind. I, I don't know, but I do know this, that so far as I have any information, they both hold each other in high regard. And if each of them thinks as much of the other as I think of both of them, well, there can be no cause for this faked controversy which a few people would like to throw out. He General McGough is a great man, mm -hmm. and Ike Eisenhower is a great man. And among great men, I find a mutual respect for that capacity. Well, if, if uh, Eisenhower is such a fighting man, isn't he going to come out pretty soon and... and uh, and uh, state his candidacy, and uh, how, how soon are we going to find out about it? I think that is a question which you're only get, going to get answered by General MacArthur himself, but I would expect that long before the convention, 
he will be in civilian life again, out of uniform, and free to answer these questions how about, for himself. How about in How about in March, Mr. Scott? You know be, we've got the. I new, wouldn't be a bit surprised. Yes. We've got the New Hampshire primary on it March 11th. It could happen 11. in February. It could happen in March. It will depend upon the completion of his job. I think that uh, most of our audience who would like would be interested in your answer to this question. Suppose General uh, Eisenhower does campaign for the Republican nomination, and suppose for some reason he loses it. Do you think that he would then support the Republican ticket in the campaign of 1952? I have said that I'm entirely convinced that he's a Republican. Uh, therefore, I apply that standard. Uh, I am sure that no matter how we may differ now, that after the convention, all of us will be united to get rid of this uh, vile shabbiness that has come to be known as Trumanism, and I would expect that any other Republican, which would include uh, General Eisenhower in civilian life, would feel the same way. Now, you, do you think that General Eisenhower will get, quotes, the liberal support in America? Do you yourself consider yourself a liberal as it's now used in American politics? Well, um, I don't think that uh, either Ike Eisenhower or myself would want to use the word liberal unless we knew what it meant. I have a quotation from him in which he said, the definition of a liberal has become a man in Washington who wants to play the almighty with our money. No, he is not that kind of a liberal. I, I think he'd be very careful with the pocketbook and the purse strings of the government. I see. If you mean a progressive, a modern-minded, middle-of-the-road, a mid-century American who shares the apprehensions of other apprehensive Americans, yes. I'm, I hope I'm that kind well, of thank progressive you, sir. myself. Thank you, sir, very much for coming up. The editorial board for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope was Mr. Henry Steger and Mr. William Bradford Huey. Our distinguished guest was the Honorable Hugh D. Scott, Jr., United States Representative from Pennsylvania. 4,000 leading jewelers of the United States will answer your question, what is the finest watch you sell, with the answer, my finest is Longines. Now isn't that a compelling consideration when planning the purchase of a watch as a Christmas gift? As a matter of fact, throughout the world in such places as Athens, storied seat of learning, Mecca, religious center of the Muslim world, in Bangkok, capital city of Thailand, the ancient Siam, or in La Paz, the sky-high capital of Bolivia, as in all capitals of all the free nations, no other name on a Christmas watch means so much as Longines, the world's most honored watch. The only watch in history to win 10 World's Fair grand prizes, 28 gold medal awards, and highest honors for accuracy from the great government observatories. There's a style and type of Longines watch for every need and purpose, faultlessly finished, styled with ageless good taste, made with the skill of 85 years of fine watchmaking experience to give good time for a long, long time. And do you know that you may buy and proudly give a Longines watch this Christmas for as little as $71.50? Longines, the world's most honored watch, premier product of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company. Since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. This is Frank Knight again, inviting you to join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evening at this same time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, broadcast on behalf of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world-honored Longines, sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display this emblem, Agency for Longines Whitnor Watches. This is the CBS Television Network.